Personally, I'm very excited about your greatest hits oh, coming out. So, you. what does it feel like um, to have a greatest hits collection in this juncture of your career? Yeah, I mean, at first, you know, when when I was approached, to, Sony approached me about it. I was like, well, you know, I'm in the middle of another record. Right. Why are you doing you just this? Just put one out. Too. Yeah, yeah. And I'll just put one out, and I'm writing another one. And you know, why are we doing this? But then I got really involved in putting it together and thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm going to choose. Okay. This is my records, my Absolutely. Races, so I'm choosing one. It should always be your record, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I got really into it, and then I, got, and then I had the idea of doing the remix album, just because remixes have been so important to me personally mm -hmm. like, over the years. So then I started having real fun doing that, and like, I picking all my favourite mixes, and everyone had an opinion of what mixes should go on, and I'm like, we're doing my favourites. Mm -hmm. You can all go. <laughs> And, um, and it was really nice, you know, and then I was listening to it and what's really nice about it is um, I was listening to it just as a record and what I didn't expect, and I know it's obvious, but I just didn't expect it, is it's like an amazing diary of my life mm -hmm. in an hour. Yeah. But, but with the full emotional run of it, you mm -hmm. know, because songs really bring back the true emotion you were feeling when you were writing them because so many of the songs on that record are written in a specific moment you mm -hmm. know of whatever feeling it was so actually I was listening to it I thought like, wow it's quite mad it's like reading a very true a diary book, yeah because yeah, you know how memories get fuzzy mm -hmm. you know and you can't quite remember mm -hmm. if you remembered something right. right but actually songs make things very real I think and um so that was like that was really nice and so now I, d I sort of look at it and think what a nice celebration of the last 10 years or so you know it's and, and you know and I had real fun I went into storage and got out all my old memorabilia and I photographed it for the inside and mm -hmm. like things that no one's ever seen and you know I'd forgotten I had and you Amazing. know like so I properly actually put put my heart into it in the end I just thought look you know these things don't come around often absolutely and I'm really proud of these songs so I'm just gonna go for it I think um no personally I believe like no angel is one of those records that every true pop music lover has in their collection. And right before the digital download age yeah, and where yeah. that whole whole thing took over. What does that feel like I to mean, uh, it's, have it's, a, such an iconic record like that? It's amazing and I think, um, yeah, I just feel really proud of it. And, and, you know, whenever I listen to it now, I can hear there's a real innocence in it, which I love, you know, and it's mm -hmm. just I really didn't think anyone was going to hear that record. And, and I can hear that. Mm -hmm. in the way I did it and mm -hmm. you know and there's nothing I'd change in that respect because I think there's a sort of you know there's a purity in that that mm -hmm. you know it's like it's not overthought because I'm not really thinking anyone's going to hear it it's yeah. just like look here's some songs and this is how they sound good and you know are you a different woman now than when like you're with very, me out? yeah so? very but in some ways still just the same do you yeah know? I mean, my values are still <laughs> the same like I'm still you know all my belief systems are still the same mm -hmm. And um, but, you know, I'm definitely more confident, and you know, um, I was very, you know, I remember doing my first gigs and just being absolutely terrified. Like, you know, I wouldn't even talk. You know, really? I remember my manager after about a year of this saying, you know, it wouldn't hurt to just say like what songs about, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. something, you know, like anything. I'll just sing the songs and run away. And then I, I sort of found my groove. And then you know, after like nine or ten years of solid touring, you find your groove. Fantastic. You know, so, uh, that was good. so you're. Um your sort of new track for the album, New York, is really cool. Yeah. Listen to it a few times cool. yesterday. And I love the lyric about, I'm not home until I walked every street in New York. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, what the song means to me, that, that actual, that I won't be home until I've walked every street in New York is actually something that my sister-in-law wrote, my brother's mm. wife. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so and I based the whole song on that one because I just loved it. She writes amazing poems. And, and, um, and I was like, that's just a great lyric. Mm -hmm. And what it reminds me of, um, and sort of what the song's about is is actually those, and what's why it's sort of quite fitting going on the greatest hits is actually, you know, when I started, I didn't start in England, I started in America, and I was mm -hmm. sort of sent off to America, and I was a bit like, you know, they put, yeah, but that, the, yeah. the problem was, uh, you know, I signed such a small label in England, they were like, we can't really afford to make a video, do anything, get your band, do mm -hmm. anything, like, we'll probably like press up a few copies of this, and that's that, mm -hmm. you know, so they were like, but, you know, look, Arista have signed you in America, they can afford to make a video and do all this, so off you go. Mm -hmm. So I went off to New York on my own, you know, found a band, did all that, and, um, 
and it's just re- remembering that feeling you know what I'm going to show you do you uh-huh. know what I mean like uh-huh. you know it's just like it's not cool <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and so it's just about those times in America where I sort of felt like I needed to go home having uh-huh. actually done something and got a show together and yeah. got the album together and done all that what is it about New York City that a lot of British artists find so enchanting oh, you think brilliant. I mean, it's yeah. just magical you know like it's just Good shop, magical, then. yeah, good shop. <laughs> but it's just a, I couldn't afford a shop, then. and um, but it's just a magical place, and I think you can just walk and walk and walk and have time like this. My problem in New York is that I find it harder to 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 um, write as many songs in New York because I sort of want to be out doing stuff in New mm-hmm. York, whereas in LA. I write more, mm-hmm. you know, like... Things are spread out. Yeah, right? exactly. You sort of, you've got more sort of lonely time to think and stuff, whereas New York's like, there's so much information coming in, it's almost mm-hmm. not until you leave that you can, like, write. Overload, it, that yeah. That makes sense, yeah. I think one of, um, when I think about your career in sort of retrospective, I think one of the most clever marketing moves you ever had was putting David Boreani's uh, in your video. <laughs> For, uh, for white, white flag, flag yeah. yeah. Um, how did that co- collaboration come out? Well, I mean, you know, I think you were funny. the envy of every woman in gay men at that time. I well, know. What was really funny was the other day I actually found. I don't know where I put it now, but I found the list of all the potentials. You know, like and some people are so famous now. It's so funny, like, <laughs> but you know, like back then they weren't so much in them. Um, of all the potential guys, and it was just a question of sort of picking, you know, picking the right one. But, um, yeah, I don't know, I just, he seemed cool, he was a really nice guy, he was totally up for doing it, you know, we just mm-hmm. wanted someone who was totally up for having right. fun and enjoying it, and he right. was great, you know, and, um, and yeah, it was just, uh, it was just funny, it was just sort of, it was a good move, though, and he was great in it. Yeah, definitely a clever yeah. marketing move back then for you. On your last album, Girl Who Got Away... My favorite track is uh, "Roof of the World." Right, yeah. So every, when I listen to that album, that's kind of my go-to track. Yeah, mine too. Actually. Really, tell me a little bit about that track. Um, well, that's actually sort of strangely like almost the most personal song I've ever written that I didn't write the lyrics to. Like, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So because Rollo wrote those lyrics, okay. and I sort of and he gave them to me, and I read them, and I'm like, and I, he wasn't with me when I wrote it, and then I, I was writing it, the 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 music and melody and stuff with Rick and, and I was like and putting it all together and um and I was just like Rick's like is this about you and I'm like I guess so sounds like it's about me <laughs> you know <laughs> but I really identify with it in the middle of the eight of that song the lyric in the middle eight mm-hmm. is so like sums everything up for me it's mm-hmm. just like look I don't really you know like I'm only ever trying to fit in yourself, anyway yeah. do you know what I mean like yeah. I couldn't have put it better myself I thought it was brilliant and um absolutely love that lyric and and uh and I love that song it's just a moment of peace and I love singing it Stanley likes it too I can't often sing it to him fantastic yeah. <laughs> now for an artist who sold 30 million albums you keep kind of a low profile which is really cool is the celebrity sort of thing any something something that you inspired to ever I mean you've got huge artists like Gaga Rihanna who are constantly no. looking I mean for I just headlines. feel like I've, I've got away with it you know I don't think that I think it's sort of it's you know, I'm. Sh- I, j- I just think that's just me in my life, and and um, and yeah. I mean, I guess I started in an age where you didn't have Twitter and all this sort of, you know, constant it, engagement. Yeah, and, co- and even now I'm way more constantly. I mean, I guess it was different because what happened, the way that I engaged with fans back then was was I would do a show and then I would set up a table after the show and you'd meet everyone and you sign your CD. Mm-hmm. That's that was the equivalent really yeah. of now but now we get this like instant thing with Twitter which I think is actually very cool and what I loved was literally on the day the album came out mm-hmm. I'm getting a feedback on what the second single should be and what you know which is mm-hmm. actually really cool and usually you'd have to wait until you tour mm-hmm. by which time everyone's like well you should have done this as the second thing because you, know? yeah. like, you want to listen to fans because they're you know they're the ones that you know they're, they're, they're listening to you properly you know and um, so so it just didn't really come up. It, it was ne- it wasn't it something to aspire to or not to aspire to. I just think it just didn't come up. I I did make a bit of a conscious effort to sort of keep me and my face out of things a uh-huh. bit. You know, like really, this last album's the first album I actually put my face on the cover. You know, properly uh-huh. and um, and you know I've always tried to keep it about the music and I was quite sort of you know militant at the beginning. Like I would get offered a lot of advertising things uh-huh. and turn them down if they were nothing to do with music which Mm -hmm. now sort of seems laughable because in this day and age like that's part of it it, yeah Yeah, and it's really important so 
Um, but you know, I was very much like, nope, it's not about the music, <laughs> not interested. <laughs> you know, my poor manager was like, oh, God, it's like, we need to do something. <laughs> yeah, no. But it works, and it worked fine. And I think, you know, I kept my integrity, and, you know, that's, you know, I definitely feel like I've sort of, you know, done what I wanted to do and had freedom, mm -hmm. you know, my whole career, which is, and still do, which is sort of amazing. Yeah, and I think that, and when an artist like you releases an album, you know, whatever internet age, download age, whatever, people will still command attention and yeah. will listen to it because you've kept that integrity. Yeah, I mean, who knows? Or, you know, like, I mean, I guess all I can really do is, like, I just write songs that I like, and I make sure that I don't put out anything that I don't like. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that simple, and that's sort of really... Fantastic. All, it is, all the job is, yeah. Having transitioned to a new age and a new music industry, mm. what's the hardest part for you as an artist today? Um, I actually think it's quite exciting. I like the idea now that, you know, in a way, like, um, I love making albums and, you know, and they have a beginning, a middle, and end, and they're a journey, but I also appreciate they're sort of less relevant now. Mm -hmm. And I actually find that quite exciting that there's choices. You can make an album, we can do an EP, we can put a track out, you can do this, we can do collaborate. You know, mm -hmm. you just sort of do whatever, and it doesn't, have, it doesn't have to follow this formula. cycle or formula. Yeah. And I think that's exciting. And and um, and I know some people find that difficult. I actually think that's pretty cool. And, um, and yeah, what's the, I mean, I don't know. I have to say, I really like it. I find it all quite liberating, this sort of new world. You know, mm -hmm. there's loads of good music about. It's, you know, lots of stuff coming through that might not have come through before and I know the worry always with the sort of the the way record companies are now where everything has to be pretty you know like it's got to do well mm -hmm. now or it's not doing well which I don't know if I'd have survived in that world mm -hmm. you know because they took a long time with me you know mm -hmm. I was like traipsing around you know I mean I was having the time of my life but, you know I was going round and round and round doing gigs and gigs you know and I, there was a lot of patience and a lot mm -hmm. of you know loyalty from the record company and and I don't know if they've got time for that now yeah. or the money, you know. And and so I think I think it's maybe hard for some artists who don't get that development, you know, um, because maybe you know they would have shined if they'd had a bit more sure. time. Sure. That's knows? actually my next question for you: is right. um, for aspiring female artists who kind of want to reach your level. What words of advice would you have for them today? I think you know the the obvious one in this day and age is get out and play. Get out and play just live. get out there yeah, yeah just get out just keep playing you know just just don't be my advice to everyone all the time from the word dot is don't be precious about putting stuff out just put it out like, mm -hmm. don't worry about you know what you're going to get from it don't worry about like just if you're proud of it get it out there and don't worry about how you're doing it you know mm -hmm. just um because i think it's so hard to be heard you know like you don't want to start getting all precious about it really i yeah. mean i think you know i think I mean, just be free with it. Totally. I'm actually a music manager myself. Right. And, uh, I think the most important thing these days is to just get your fans, give them good content, totally. and keep them happy. Yeah. And anyone can make a career out of music these yeah. days. I mean, I think, you know, just make music you're proud of. And also, like, if you're proud of what you're doing and, 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 um, and you like it and you feel good about it, then if anyone says anything bad about it, you just don't care. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so just be proud of... Yeah. what you put out there and then you can stand up and be counted for it and feel really good about it Fantastic. even if the whole world's coming down against you <laughs> <laughs> that was all my questions any sort of closing words for our EQ music readers um, no I just like I hope you enjoy hearing the songs in a different different way you know mm -hmm. and um, and uh, and especially the remix album I think that'll be I think that'll be a treat just because there's stuff on there that no one's even heard like there was I found this Timberland mix of White Flag that no one had ever even really? heard and, yeah and, Jenna, I want that one yeah. Sounds like <laughs> and, um, <laughs> yeah so there's you know all sorts of stuff on there that's um, you know and, I, and it's just nice it's a nice diary diary of my life really fantastic well can't wait for chapter two as well oh, yeah exactly <laughs>